Hey guys, Jared Wesley here of Live Traders and back for another educational video. Um, couple comments, guys. So this week's topic, or this video's topic, I should say, is going to be on moving averages and how to use them effectively, okay? But before I get into the moving average video, um, I wanna talk about one quick thing, and it might take me one or two minutes. My intent is not to ramble on. I'm gonna bury the hatchet, guys, with this money management thing, this small account challenge stuff, because too many of you are just not getting it. The ones that wanna learn properly will learn properly, and the ones that don't wanna learn properly, well, they won't learn properly. Here's the thing. Many of you out there have outcome goals. I want, I want, I want, okay? I want a new car. I want a better life. I want to make a million dollars, whatever. I want, I want, I want, okay? That is your outcome goal. But what very few of you have is a process goal. How, right? You already know the what. I want a million dollars. The question is, how are you going to get the million dollars? Guess what? The process goal is more important than the outcome. You'll never reach the outcome without the process. So what I'm getting at, guys, is a lot of you are looking at, oh, I'm gonna turn $600 into a million dollars. And what's, what's there? The outcome goal, the million, 600 to a million. The question is, how do you bridge the gap to make 600 into a million? Well, there is no process for that. That's called gambling. With my rules, guys, you can never, ever, ever, ever risk more than 1% of your cash account on a trade. You basically risked your entire account to get that. Guys, that is not a viable process goal, right? You have the outcome. That is not a viable process. You're better off going to Vegas and you'll have more fun when you're there. Okay, so I just wanted to bury that hatchet, guys, because look, I can only lead so many of you guys. You can lead a horse to water. I can only lead so many to the water, and some of you guys are gonna turn around and go back, and that's your own fault. You wanna blow up accounts, that's up to you. But let's talk about today's topic, guys. Moving averages, one of the most misunderstood things in trading. As you guys know, I am not a big fan or a big proponent of indicators. I really don't like indicators. In fact, I really don't use any. Even moving averages, I don't use that much. But today, I wanna to talk about moving averages and how you can, especially for newer traders, gain an edge by using moving averages in conjunction or in confluence with other attributes, right? Multiple concepts converging in an area is what we're after, and the moving average is one of those things. But remember, nothing ever supersedes price. Price always comes first. Every indicator by definition is lagging price. So you have to have price first before you have the indicator. And we'll talk about that in the video, okay? So today's topic, guys, is moving averages and how to use them properly and effectively to be a more accurate and profitable trader, okay? Jared Wesley of Live Traders. Let's get to it, guys. Okay guys, so today's topic is going to be moving averages and how to use them effectively. Now, first and foremost, note, I do not use moving averages. <laughs> All right, you're going, wait a second. You're gonna do a, a lecture on moving averages and you just said you don't use them. I used to use them extensively. Uh, I don't use them anymore. Um, they're a good guide and I'm gonna show you why they're a good guide. Experienced traders can usually eyeball it up and know where the moving average is or should be on the chart, okay? So moving averages, guys, are things that um, will help you be a better trader, I think, when you're newer. The one, and I'll talk about this in more in depth in a couple minutes, uh, that I think is important for everybody to use is the 200 period moving average on the daily time frame. Okay, and I'll talk about why in a little bit. But, 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 before we get into moving averages, I want to talk a little bit about extendedness for two or three slides, and then we'll get into moving averages. Okay, so... A week or two ago, I don't remember exactly when, we went over penetration and reversals, okay? And everybody had their jokes about penetration levels. Great, we get it, we're all 12, okay? So the larger the reversal bar is relative to the prior bar, the more compelling. The level or depth of retracement into the prior bar increases control, right? And we looked at six different um, examples and we ranked them between most potent and least potent, okay? The reason I'm bringing this up is these are going to play or have an impact on moving averages. Okay, so I'm not going to spend a long time on this slide because we already did that. 
All right, so we pull down into this possible support here. You get a wide range green bar with significant penetration taking out most of the red bar. That is a bullish sign. That's a potent reversal, okay? This is less potent because the level of penetration is not quite as deep, okay? And the exact same concept on the short side. So that's about all I'm gonna spend on this slide. Watch the other video if you want a more in-depth explanation of this. What I wanna go to is this and how it relates to reversals, okay? So this is a, a little bit of a pet peeve of mine and a lot of new traders do this, okay? Like KRTX, for example, right? I get a lot of questions, whether it's in the chat room or whether it's outside the chat room through email, YouTube, whatever, about stocks that are up like nine bars in a row. Guys, I want you to take just a quick look at this. The more extended a stock is, the closer it is to a pullback, okay? So if your stock that you're watching or possibly even in is up three bars, you wanna just think about selling. Just think about it. it does, I'm not saying sell. Note, I did not say sell. I said, think about it. Just give it some thought. Like, all right, this stock is starting to move in my direction. Now, when you're up four bars, you're thinking a little bit more about selling. You're up five bars, you're thinking a little bit more about selling. You're up six bars, now you're really, 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 really thinking about selling. Guys, they don't go up in perpetuity, stocks come back. So the more extended that something is, the more likely a pullback is closer than farther away, all right? Now this has implications on when you might enter a trade, when you might exit a trade. Okay, the more extended something is, the more likely a reversal is coming. So if you're in it long, you wanna tighten up. So if you're doing, for example, a five minute bar by bar, trailing a stock out bar by bar, moving your stop loss up as the stock goes higher, you might wanna drop down a time frame. Once you get up four or five bars, move down from the five minute time frame to possibly a two minute time frame. Why? Because a reversal is more likely to happen. And if it's more likely to happen, you don't wanna give up profits. Now on the flip side, if a stock is really extended, borderline climactic, you would start thinking about a possible entry, right? And what are you gonna use for those entries? Topping tails, volume increases, wink, wink, moving averages, okay? All of those things, you guys call it confluence, right? M multiple concepts converging in an area. So the more extended something is, the more likely a reversal is coming. And this is why it's a huge pet peeve of mine when traders mention stocks that they want to buy and they're already up four bars. They're already up five bars. They're already up six bars. The only reason you would ever talk about buying a stock that's up five or six bars is FOMO, fear of missing out. That is the only way you would ever think about buying a stock up here. And FOMO is a dangerous thing in trading. Don't have it. Why? There's always another trade. All right. So novices do crazy, stupid stuff like that. They get in stocks that are up three, four, five, six bars. If a stock is up on the daily chart, four bars, and then it gaps up today, don't even think about going long on it. You might think about shorting, but you're definitely not going long. In fact, it happened today in the chat room. I can't remember the symbol. Somebody asked me about a trade. It was already up four days in a row, and then it gapped up. That's just basic trading 101, all right? So the more extended something is, the closer it is to a reversal. That is the key I want you to take about from this slide. If you're in it long, and it's up four, five, six bars, think about dropping down to a lower time frame and tightening your stop loss. Okay, if you're not in it and you're thinking, wow, this stock is extended, maybe I wanna short it, then you're gonna start looking for what? Topping tails, volume spikes, moving averages, all of those things, okay? So again, the thought process is what you're after here. What is the next likely move for this stock? And guys, just, just so you know, there are stocks that go up 20 bars in a row. It doesn't mean buying it after six bars was a good idea because we don't know the future. Anybody who tells you they know the future is lying to you, okay? So up six bars and going long on it is still a very, very low odds, dangerous proposition, even if it goes another six bars in a row. It doesn't make it any less dangerous. It's just that's the one out of a thousand that actually worked, okay? So just don't do it. And the same is true, right, on the short side. 
If you're in a trade short and the stock keeps dropping and dropping three bars down, then it's four bars down, then it's five bars down. In fact, today when we were in HD, we got to five bars down and I actually typed in the room, a reversal is likely coming. Why? We were getting very, very close to support. All right. HD was near the $225 double bottom pre-market support area and it arrived at support after five or six bars down. And guess what happened to HD? popped up two or three dollars because that's what's supposed to happen all right and remember we're odds traders so we always go over what's supposed to happen there's obviously things that break the trend and break the rules that's just the way life works but because we're odds traders we go with the statistical probability and a stock that's down six bars in a low is more likely to bounce than it is to go down seven eight nine bars but it does happen from time to time doesn't mean you should short it Okay, so always think about the thought process. What should you be doing the more extended a stock gets? Either looking for a reversal or tightening your stop if you happen to be short in it. Okay, so I want you guys to use this because I'm going to be talking about this very concept in the next several slides. Okay, this next slide is directly out of professional trading strategies. You're welcome for those of you who haven't taken it. Okay. So in general, guys, and I'm not going to read all this here at Live Traders, I'm I'm not a big proponent of these things. OK, I mean, there are literally like four or five hundred different indicators out there from stochastics to Bollinger Bands to Fibonacci to Com Channel inject inchecks to uh, relative strength indicator. And all of you guys out there seem to love indicators. I don't know why. All right. And most of the charts I look at when somebody emails me a chart, hey, Jared, take a look at this. I literally have to like get a microscope out to find the candlestick bars. I mean, you guys have spaghetti on your charts. It's like a an Italian pasta festival on most of your charts, okay? I don't know why. When price and volume are the number one thing you need, everything we do is based off of price and volume, everything. Why not just go to price and volume? Think about what I said. If everything is a product of price and volume, right? It's important to note that moving averages are not support or resistance. They are lagging indicators, which means price must happen before the indicator can form. If that is true, which it is true, why don't you just go to the price? Just go to the candlestick first. Go to the volume second. Indicators should be the last thing you go to. And if you use them, don't use more than one. If you have two, maybe. Anything other than that is just gluttonous. It's just ridiculous. I don't know why you need it. Oh, it's the MA crossover on the Fibonacci retracement with an RSI and the comm channels over 100. And oh my gosh, that's the magic holy grail. Sure it is. Okay. It's unbelievable. Right. It's unbelievable. So if you want to use one, maybe two. Okay. All right. Maybe. All right. Most indicators are utterly, absolutely worthless and useless. If one indicator was so great, why are there 400 of them? Think about it for a second. So anyway, price comes first. By definition, moving averages lag price. The price has to happen for that moving average to form. All right, so 9 EMA, 21 EMA, and guys, you don't have to use exponential. You can use regular moving averages if you want. That's up to you. It doesn't really much matter. There's not a lot of difference, okay? So 9 EMAs are used on short time frames, one minutes, two minutes, five minute charts only. 21, again, if you want to use the 20 EMA or the 10 EMA, that's fine. I don't care. Note how flexible I am with, with moving averages. I'm good with that. All right. You can use this on all charts. And the 200 is mainly used on 60 minutes, dailies, and weeklies. And guys, to be honest, this is the one that's really important. All right. This is the ones that hedge funds use. This is the ones that money managers use. They use big EMAs on big time frames. Most of those guys aren't looking at two-minute charts. They're looking at dailies, weeklies, monthlies, yearlies, and they'll put a 200 uh, MA on that. Okay. EMA or MA doesn't much matter. So let's dig in here. All right. So here's an uptrending stock with a moving average on it. Okay. I put this on because in the next couple slides, we're going to start adding things to this. All right. The first thing I noticed are the red and green candlesticks, the price, right? The volume is important too, but right now we're just focused on the price. Okay. So we have a stock that's trending higher. Right, higher highs, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low. It's a very nice stage two uptrend, right? This is wonderful. I, I would love to see this stock tomorrow, okay? So for newer traders, the moving average is just a guide to show you that the stock is moving higher, 
right? It's in an uptrend with higher highs and higher lows, okay? So when you look at this, note where the pullbacks are. Pullback, moving average, bounce. Consolidation, moving average, bounce. Consolidation, moving average, bounce. Pullback, moving average, bounce. Pullback, moving average, bounce. So note, there are two types of corrections, right? We have a correction through price, which is a pullback. We have a, co a correction through time, right? Which is a consolidation. Either one in this case, correction through price, which is this pullback, correction through time, which is the consolidation, they're magnets to the moving average. And the moving average becomes like a trampoline, like a springboard for this stock. But it's not just the moving average. So let's take a look at the next slide, okay? Now note, multiple concepts converging in an area, okay? Multiple concepts converging in an area. So we move up, we pull back, we move up, we pull back. Now we already saw the moving average here. We already saw that. Now what do we also have? And this is what's key. This is what you want to do for every trade you take. So we see this pullback here. Guys, what did I say about one, two, three, four, five bars? Expect what after five bars? Wait, let's go back just in case you forgot. Oh, look at that. Think about buying. Really think about buying. Okay, let's go back to the chart. Oh, look at that. Five bars down. But notice this five bar pullback is not happening in no man's land. It's happening somewhere, right? Where is it happening? In a beautiful spot. What is that beautiful spot? It's happening right above the moving average. It's happening right here, just above what? I'll pull this over just so you guys can see it. Just above support, right? This is minor price support or level two price support, okay? So note, it's happening right above the moving average, okay? It's happening right above support, okay? I'll pull this back over here for a second, okay? And it's also happening on a 50% retracement, okay? So this is what I call the trifecta with regard to location items. Location items are your friend. This is multiple concepts converging, or as some of you like to call it, confluence, all right? So the moving average is just one of three things we're looking for. We're looking for the 50%, right, retracement. We're looking for support to the left. But we also got that four or five bar retracement happening in that area. So we have like four concepts here, right? 50% retracement is one. Rising moving average is two. Support is three. Multiple bars down is four. The more of these that happen in an area, the higher the likelihood is that the trade works. Okay, so now let's go one more slide. So now we have everything we just saw. The only thing I left on is the moving average. You're gonna get in right here on the green bar. Your stop loss is gonna go under the red bar. And your first, first target is gonna be that prior pivot high. So you're getting in somewhere around 37.50, give or take. Stop loss looks to be around 37.40. It's tight, it's only 10 cents. And your target looks to be around 37.80-ish. So you have about a two to three to one target for your first target. And this is possible for multiple reasons. First reason, stock's in a nice stage two uptrend. That's number one. The stock has already proven, okay, that it's strong. It's already proven that it's strong. So when we finally get up to this point, we're like, wow, I know the stock is strong. It's bounced off the moving average here. It consolidated and broke out up here, okay? And it's holding the moving average. It hasn't really significantly broken below the moving average. That is what we call a power trend, right? That is a power trend. So it pulls back into this area. We'll go back one slide. We have multiple concepts converging, boom, rip. This is a very high odds trade. Very, very high odds trade. And the moving average lets you know that the trend is strong. Now. I don't need the moving average on my chart because I can see the higher pivot highs and higher pivot lows. And I can on almost any chart, if you say, hey, Jared, where's the 21 EMA? I can draw it for you, right? And you should, you will too after a while, okay? Let's move on to another one, all right? So note, note, there are two time frames here. There's a 15 minute chart, which is this big chart. And then on the left-hand side here, this is a daily chart. Why? We always start with the daily chart. Always, always, always start with the daily chart. 
Okay, so this stock got hammered, climactic on the daily, right? Wide range, red bar, huge, right? Novice ending volume, pro igniting volume, bounces back up. But note the declining moving average. For those of you that know what climactics are, the first target is the declining moving average. That's always the first target. The declining moving average is always the first target, okay? So we're gonna take that and go, wow, somewhere in that range, of I don't know what that is 93 bucks okay is where that target is likely going to be so let's move down drill down to the 15 minute so we see this choppy day right here that's that day that doji day on the daily this choppy day right here is the doji day on the daily all right and then it rips higher but note one two three four bars up plus yesterday four or five bars up wait for it wait for it what do we do guys when we're up three, four, five bars up. You think about selling or wait for a pullback, right? Wait for a pullback. So that's what happens. We're expecting that pullback to happen because the stock is four or five bars up. We're expecting that pullback to happen. And it did. One, two, three, four bars. Now let's go back. I know I'm beating a horse, but you guys need it. Now we're four bars down. What are we expecting? A bounce, okay, a bounce, okay? So, right here, four bars down, but where is it happening is key. Multiple concepts, it's happening right at the rising moving average. It's happening right at support, right there, okay? Right at support, right there, on about a 50% retracement, and it's got multiple time frames. The daily is in conjunction with the 15 minute. Do you guys see putting it all together here? But the moving average helped guide you where it should pull back to. It's also right at support, right? Minor price support or level two support. Let's do it again. Now, let's use a moving average as a target, right? So instead of using it as a buy point, let's use it as a sell point. Right, so the last two slides I've showed you, we looked at the moving average as an area in which you might wanna buy the stock. Now we're gonna use the moving average as an area in which you're gonna sell the stock. Sell the stock, okay? So we have a 60 minute chart and the stock gets climactic. I mean, it sells off super crazy wide range red bar. Look at all the volume down there. Look at the bottoming tail, novice ending volume coming in, massive volume. Guys, the stock normally does like 50,000 shares per bar. It's doing one or two million shares per bar. Then right down here, you have a wide, um, wide range volume spike, which is pro igniting volume. You get in right there at 2050. You could have snuck in a little earlier, right? But if you got in at 2050, your stop is 19.50. Again, if you wanted to use that bottoming tail, it's more aggressive, but you could have. But the first target is the moving average. On a climactic buy setup, the first target's your moving average. So in this case, that ends up being almost two to one. You got in at 20.50 with a $1 stop loss. So your target likely is 22.50, but we got to get out just a tad before that because the moving average at like 22.40, 22.30. Okay, so in this case, we use the moving average as a target because the moving average acts as a magnet. It acts as a magnet. You'll see here in a couple of minutes. I'm going to show you some more examples. Don't worry. All right, so we got so far away from the moving average in this case, this stock became climactic. The bars stretched us far away from the moving average, which means at some point, we're going to bounce back to the moving average. The moving averages are like magnets, guys. That's what they are. If you want to call it that, it's probably a good analogy for it, okay? So now let's go back to moving averages as areas to buy. But instead of pullbacks, let's use it on breakouts. So the first couple of examples I gave you were pullbacks. They were corrections through price, right? Here we have two beautiful breakouts. We have one down here, right here. You could have bought that right there. Note. Stock consolidates back to the moving average. One of the most common questions I get is, Jared, how do I know when a breakout is ready to go? How do I know when a breakout is ready? And the answer I generally give folks is when it gets close to the moving average. It doesn't have to touch the moving average, but when it gets close to it. So when you look at this consolidation, 
I would say right around here, right there, I would say that stock is, is, is good enough now. It's rested long enough to go. Why? Because it's near the moving average. The moving average isn't super far away like it was here. Remember, one, two, three, four, five, six bars up. Wait for it, guys. I know you're getting tired of this. I know, but we got to do it. We got to do it. Six bars up equals pullback. Well, in this case, we didn't get a pullback, which is a correction through price. What did we get? We got a consolidation, which is a correction through time. Okay? Correction through time. All right? So you have two types. We talked about it. Correction through price when a stock is extended, which is a pullback, or a correction through time, uh, which is a consolidation. In this case, once the stock got close to the moving average, it's probably ready. Going to put my order in for this. Okay? Consolidate, consolidate. Right in that area, call it 600 bucks. I don't know exactly what it is. That's where you're going to buy. Your stop loss is going to be somewhere around 599. Rip, rip. Now remember, yes, this stock went one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten bars. But you got to be thinking about what? Extended away from the moving average, up seven, eight, nine bars, pullback. It does pull back ultimately. But I would be tightening right here for sure. Once you're up one, two, three, four bars, start to tighten up in here. If you're managing this out, instead of maybe five minute bar by bars, go to two minutes. Instead of 15 minute bar by bars, go to five minute bar by bars. But this is an example where when the stock came back to the moving average, it ripped. Okay. Now, let's change gears again. All right. There's a lot of good information here, guys. Probably too good, to be honest with you. All right. Now, let's change gears again. Now we're on the 200 period moving average. The last ones you saw were 20 period moving averages on the daily this time. Now, why is this important? This is a cardinal sin that many of you guys make. Cardinal sin, okay? A stock gaps right into the daily 200 and you guys trade it. The daily 200 is something you don't want to mess with. So note, this stock gap down under a pivot, under a pivot, under a pivot. So most of people are going, oh, that's not bad. It gapped under a pivot. It's got a little bit of room to drop. But look where it gapped to, right? As soon as it moved into the 200, what happened? It left the bottoming tail and it bounced, okay? The 200 period moving average is like a mega magnet. If you gap on the high side or the downside, upside or downside into the 200, be very, 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 very careful. It's highly unusual for a stock to get near the 200 period moving average on the daily and not react to it. It's very rare for a stock to gap down in this case to the 200 and just slice right through it like it's, like it's not even there. It's extremely rare. So if you gap into a moving average like this, be cautious. I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade the stock short. I'll tell you that flat out. I would not short this stock at 107. It's not gonna get through that moving average easily. If it may eventually get through it, but not today, okay? So I wanna be very clear about that. The 200 period moving average is extremely powerful, especially on the daily time frame. okay? You're not likely gonna slice right through it, okay? Now, let's change it up again. Let's change it up again. Now we're talking about reversals. Now guys, one more comment because I'm gonna beat the horse till it's really just absolutely dead. One, two, three, four, five bars down. What do we get? Reversal. Five bars down. What I tell you guys to think about doing? Think about reversal. Think about a reversal. There it is, reversal. Okay, and then you got several bars up, reversal. Now, here's the thing. You have a stock that's in a downtrend, right? This 21 moving average is going lower, right? Bouncing, dropping, bouncing. Now, some of you are going, sweet, great, fantastic. I got back to the declining moving average, just like Jared said to do. I know the breakdown is ready when it gets back to the moving average. That's how I know the breakdown is ready when it gets back to, remember, we went, let's go back. Remember I said a couple minutes ago, you know the breakout's ready when it gets near the moving average. Now I'm gonna throw a kink in it. Well, we get near the moving average, don't we? And it fails. Drops massive volume, right? And doesn't go lower. For all of you guys that have watched my breakdown videos, breakout videos, what do I always tell you? 
A huge volume spike with little to no price movement means trouble, means reversal. A huge volume spike with little to no price movement equals a reversal. Okay? This stock, dead man walking. It's about to bounce. Now, how would you have known that? By moving average separation. You take the 21 here and you take the 200 here and you look at the distance. Note, it's not that far. It's not the distance as much as the acceleration of the distance that I care about. Right? It's not the distance as much as the acceleration of the distance. Careful. This stock is probably going to bounce. You could have seen that most likely just by the level of extension. It went from 21.50 down to 18 bucks. Right? The level of extension, $3, $3.50 move is a big move. Stock is going to bounce. Don't short that. Don't short that. Let's do it one more time. Same situation. Declining, 20 period moving average, 21 period moving average. Declining, 200 period. But note, the extension. What gives you the extension? These two wide range bars. Note, drops below, big volume spike. You're done. It's going to bounce. You could see that by using the 21 here against the 200 over here, okay? But you could also say, wow, it's at 24.50, now it's at 22, okay? Now, guys, this is not a daily chart. So you can have the 200 MA on any time frame you want. I mean, you can put it on the one minute, the two minute, the five minute. It doesn't have to just be on the daily. I only use it on the daily, all right? And for me, I wouldn't likely take this because of the, how extended it is, all right? This breakdown would have been better because the move from 24.50 to 23.50 wasn't nearly as severe. This is tough. Okay? So one last chart, guys. One last chart. Then we'll wrap this up. It's a blank chart. That's a beauty, isn't it? This has a little bit of everything on it. It's a stage two uptrend using the moving average as a guide. So here, again, we're moving higher. Note, the stock's up like 52 bars in a row. It needs to consolidate. Why? It needs to rest. Correction through price or time? This case is a correction through time. We go up one, two, three bars, little four bars there. What happens? It's tired. So what do we need? A correction through price in this case. Pulls back three or four bars. Where? To the rising moving average. Where? To price support. Right? So you're at support at a moving average. Bounces. Remember, prior pivot high is your first target, you would have taken some off there. This is a stock that if you got in here, you would have added over here. This is beautiful. I mean, this is like so silly nice, it's not even funny. All right, what, what happens? Consolidates back to the moving average, rips, gets far from the moving average, consolidates in again, kind of maintains the distance, then pulls back, gets far from the moving average, pulls back. Note, moving average is like a magnet to this thing. It's like a magnet. So, I don't want to like throw that kink in. I don't use moving averages very often, but you as newer traders can use them as a guide. All right. The one though that you can never go against, you should never go against is this. If you see a gapping stock, I'm commenting because many of us are gap traders. We love to trade gaps in the morning. If a stock is gapping right into the 200 period moving average on the daily, long or short, stay away from it. Stay away from it. If it's gapping at support to the 200 period moving average, you probably want to go long on it, right? You probably want to go long on it, okay? So moving averages can be effective, but just remember, they are not, not, not actual areas of support and resistance. Moving averages form after price forms. So only price can be actual support, all right? So use prices as your main influence and use the moving average as a guide. It's that simple. Okay, so moving average versus actual price. And one last comment, I know I said it before, I just want to reiterate this. Don't get caught up in all these indicators. You just don't need them, guys, right? You just don't need them. Okay, you guys see in all my slides, I don't use them. It's a nice guide. You don't have to put 27 indicators on your charts, crisscrossing this way. It's the MACD crossover, stochastic Fibonacci retracement with the RSI, and it's at 1027 in the morning on a Thursday, and it happens to be the 12th of the month. I mean, it's just ridiculous. Just use price, man. Why? Because that's what moves the chart. You guys realize that 
Every time somebody places a trade, that trade forms a tick, that tick forms a bar, and that bar forms a chart. And those charts are what we use to make money. And it doesn't matter if you're Warren Buffett or me or you or Michael Jordan. Everybody that's in that stock is, is represented in that bar or that chart. So use those charts. Use those candlesticks. That's what they're there for. Use the moving average as a guide. Okay, use the moving average as a guide. All right. So I hope you guys enjoyed that lecture. All right. And that will do it for the moving average lecture. See you guys again next time. To get more great educational content, subscribe to the Live Traders YouTube channel. This way you'll get email alerts every time I upload a new video.